Hi, uh, quick question. Uh, just wondering, do you know who Margaret Tate is? Um, no. So, Margaret, you grew up in the Orkney Islands. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes, well, I'm from Kirkwall, just off Scotland, the Orkney Islands. It's a very quaint little town and very beautiful, just beside the sea. And can I ask, when were you born? Well, a woman never reveals her age. <laughs> 1918. So, can you give us a bit of an insight into your childhood? Well, my family was seafaring merchants, and like most families on the island, we had our fair share of drownings, which actually inspired my work. Just uh, tell us about that a bit later. At the age of nine, I was sent away to school, into uh, Edinburgh. It was uh, quite different from the quaint little town that I knew of Orkney. And am I right in saying that you qualified as a doctor there? Well, during the Second World War, yes, I did. It was a very terrible, terrible time. Oh, oh there's someone coming from someone. Excuse me, excuse me. Um, I'd like to ask a quick question. Do you know who Margaret Tate is? No. Sorry. <laughs> Not even one bit. M Margaret Tate? Uh, oh, I know she's a character in that film, The Proposal. Is that what you mean? No, I mean the uh, Scottish experimental film artist. Uh, no, I'm sorry, no. <laughs> no uh, idea. <laughs> well, she was a very profound and uh, good uh, experimental artist. Many critiques find uh, her work amusing and uh, quite quite natural. Yeah. What, do you, what do you think about this? <laughs> Come back! <sighs> Seems like we lost another one. So, what did you do after that, and when did you, you know, get into film? Well, during the remainder of the war, I served in India as part of the medical corps. After that, I returned to Scotland and became a doctor's locum, just being a doctor in the absence of the main house doctor. But throughout all this, I somehow got into film. And um, where did you go to study film? Well, I studied at one of the most prominent film schools in Rome, the uh, Centro di Sperimentale di Cinematographer. Uh, it was at the height of the Italian neorealist movement uh, during the early 50s, really. Um, what was this inspiration that you were telling us about earlier? Well, a lot of my work came from my childhood was the sea. The sea looked wonderful, but yet it had deadly undercurrents. And as I mentioned, most of the island's childhoods were drowning and had a major factor of that. Oh, Margaret Tate, yes, I'm sure everyone's heard of Margaret Tate. I mean, she's an amazing film director. You know, she she makes she makes lots of really in, invigorating films that really touch you, right there, right there. Yeah. So, uh, you want to tell us anything about them then? Oh, anything? I'll, I'll be happy to. I'll be happy to. I mean, Margaret Tate created loads, many, many short films in her life, such as uh, uh, a Portrait of Gar, which is a uh, documentary piece about an old woman. I don't really know who it was, but it was she was fantastic. The, the it, um, it was actually her mother. It was her mother. Uh, such as a, uh, a portrait of Gar, which was a film about her mother, um, of, of, of all things. And she painted a fantastic picture about her mother. She's got, you know, really got it here. I think I've said that before. Um, she also directed a uh, full motion picture called uh, Blue Black Peppermint, uh, which was a, um, it was a, a feature about a, a, a debut. It was, it was actually called uh, Blue Black Permanent. Um, can, we, can we do that again? A full length motion picture called uh, Blue Black Permanent. Uh, this was a uh, feature debut and uh, was her only feature production, unfortunately. You know, I think there should have been more because that, that was such a good film. Um, yes, yeah, so it was showing great influence uh, from the n Italian neorealist of the late 40s. Um, Tate showcased the poetic beauty and experimental film through the subjectivity and subtle notions of portraiture. Which is a very long word. So, a portrait of Gar. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Oh yes, um, one of it's one of Tate's most recognisable and iconic pieces of film. It's a short documentary piece, but she she delivers it in such a good way. It's about her mother, but also, get this, also how much a camera can reveal about something or someone just just by just by random shots and through the idea of motion and time. Um, <laughs> Hi, excuse me, I'd like to ask you a quick question. Uh, do you have any idea who Margaret Tate is? Margaret Tate. Um, Margaret Tate. Um, who's that comedian? Uh, Catherine Tate. No, I, I know Catherine Tate. Margaret Tate, uh, I don't know. Well, uh, she was a profound Scottish experimental filmmaker. What do you feel about this? Okay, and no, I've never heard of her, but I mean, it's not really an area that I'm kind of um, you know, knowledgeable about or, or particularly interested in, to be honest. 
showcasing her mother um, allows Tate to explore the idea of portraiture through film and, and how, how beautiful and natural it is. I mean, being surrounded by the highlands of the Orkneys, uh, the influence of nature is, is implemented and uh, makes the process of film seem so real and sincere. Uh, especially, especially in the sense that uh, the camera is an object, objective and a man-made device. I mean, she captured something so natural there. It was so good. Well, um, there's also another one of many of her short films, and it was a portrait of a Scottish uh, poet, Hugh McDarvery. Yes, yes, oh, that, was, that was also a very good one. Um, Tate, once again, explores the idea of portraiture through this film with this intimate look into the life of a great Scottish poet, which is uh, Hugh Mc... Uh, Mc, Mc, Mc Hugh, Hugh, Hugh Mc... With this intimate look into the life of a great Scottish poet, Hugh MacDiarmid, uh, capturing the energy of Scotland through the embodiment of it in MacDiarmid. This is expressed through the lively words in the voice that uh, draft over the film, which is uh, fantastic. The intimacy of seeing MacDiarmid in the pub grants the audience a sense of simple pleasures, whilst keeping the, this idea of unexpectedness from MacDiarmid. Um, Filming him walking on the very periphery of the pavement initiates this sense of uh, edge and unexpected rawness. Well, Tate had a very set way of filming. She mostly used a clockwork Bolex camera from her very early films all the way up to her films in the 1990s. This gave Tate a very distinctive visual look, that grainy feel even when it was in colour. I think the use of the 16mm film gives it a feel that you simply don't get with modern digital equipment. In the same way that a vinyl record sounds different from a modern compact disc or digital music file. Very interesting. So, uh, d did she use a tripod or, or was it all handheld? She used a mix of both. I believe in order to suit what the film was supposed to convey. In a portrait film, a portrait of Gar and Hugh McDermid, she tended to use tripod shots in order to convey rigidity and information and the handheld shots in order to create an idea of intimacy and identity. This was also seen in her later films such as Rose Street and later on in On the Mountain. There's someone going in the toilet, so we're just uh, waiting here for them to come out, ask them a couple of questions. Yeah, any second now. Hi, excuse me, I'd like to ask you a quick question. Um, Go ahead. Do you know anything about Margaret Tate or who she is? Margaret Tate, um, oh yes, she 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 was that prime minister lady, wasn't she? Yes. Uh, no, 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 no. I I definitely remember her because we we tried to blow her up once. I seem to remember. We failed. Why did we fail? Um. Well, a bit awkward here. We're not actually talking about Margaret Thatcher. That's the one you're thinking of. Um. Margaret Tate was a Scottish profound experimental filmmaker. What are your what are your views on this? Um. Did she come to Ireland at all? Uh, maybe on a day trip. Not, nothing more, I don't think. So it's got nothing to do with Ireland? Mm, nothing whatsoever. Oh, t Tan, you're wasting my time. You're wasting my time. If it's got nothing to do with Ireland, I, I don't care. So what was this about? Uh, you blowing care. people up? I don't care. All right. What do you have to say about blowing people up? I'm not saying anything. No, no, go away. Go away. Turn that camera off. <laughs> Turn that camera off. Oh, oh God. God. Leg it. <laughs> They did. Uh, did she? Uh, did she always use the absence of soundtrack? Actually, no. She occasionally commissioned music for her pieces, most noticeably from Hector McAndrew, from Where I Am Is Here, and from John Gray, who did Blue, Black, Permanent, and her last work, Garden Pieces. But yes, in most of her films, she preferred to use an ambient soundtrack of the world around her, a technique I believe she picked up in Rome. Oh, well, that's very interesting. Thanks very much. Uh, for my last question, um, I'd like to get away from the technical aspects quickly and uh, ask uh, what sort of messages did she like to convey to her film, just quickly? Well, to the trained eye, her films actually contain many political and social references that were personal to her. For example, you can see many references to the offshore uranium drilling proposals in the North Sea and aspects of Kirkwall, some changes. The Greenpeace main boat, the Rainbow Warrior, was seen to be docked in the harbour. There are also large banners against the proposals and street marches, 
Also seen in Colour Poems, another short film of hers. Well, thank you very much. Um, uh, I, think, I, think, I think that's it. Not even a clue. Um, I'm guessing she's not quite as good as me. I mean, I'm Jesus, so, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good. <laughs> Um, I have some references. Uh, Margaret Tate, available at uh, luxonline.org.uk, uh, slash artist, slash Margaret underscore Tate, index.html, last access to 27th of March 2011. It's, uh, frankly, it's fantastic. Damn it, who are you? You, you, I, I, you.